being here welcome to let's talk where this is just an opportunity for conversations to have where we talk about health sex and wellness so today we are gathered here to talk about women's health and women's wellness and sexual health so i thank everybody that is tuning in i am asha sims the chakra therapist and i have here with me today dr deja and dr queen who are here to uh, fill us in on a little bit about women's health. And really since we're talking about women's health and we're going more into the sexual health because it really all plays into together. So I'm gonna let my other two co-hosts introduce themselves and tell a little bit about who they are. And then we're gonna go into a little bit about what we're seeing in our professions when it comes to women's health as well as the sexual health now. Um, so I'm gonna start with Dr. Deja, introduce yourself and tell the world who you are, <laughs> where you located. Hello, I'm Dr. Deja. I'm located in Matthews, North Carolina, just on the outskirts of Charlotte. Um, I am a chiropractor. My practice is called Numa Wellness Center. Um, and it's been about two years. Uh, I graduated from the Fountainhead of Chiropractic in Iowa in 2017. And, interned a little bit in Iowa and then came back home because I was just tired of the cold. <laughs> Negative 40 is not for me. Oh, no. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, came back home and decided to open up. So just super excited. I see kids, I see adults, I see families, um, just overall wellness center, not just focusing on just your uh, physical health, but also your mental, your emotional, um, sometimes even trickles into spiritual. However, Holy Spirit wants mm -hmm. to move. I just flow with it. Um, but uh, my desire is just to really educate people so they understand um, their body and the healing potential within the body and any kind of miscommunication that might be going on. I am a mother of two boys, nine and five, and they keep me on the go. Uh, single life is, is, is busy with them, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. But that's pretty much about me. That's what I Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Can we Yes, so I am Kenise Ford L. Um, I go by Dr. Queen. That's a whole story in itself. I'm a, I was a performer in my in my past life, so that's where I got <laughs> A W E E N. Um, so yeah, I uh, I'm a I practice acupuncture and herbology. Chinese medicine is the lens that I practice through, but I call myself an integrative uh, health practitioner because I use multiple modalities, but indigenous and Chinese medicine are, are the, the lens, both lenses that I practice through. Um, and as Dr. Deja said, you know, I, I treat from a, a holistic uh, place, you know, your, your mental, your spiritual space, your emotional space, they all are very important to your overall well-being. So um, my practice is called Feminine Wellness Boutique because I do uh, women's work. You know, I, before I became a uh, Chinese medicine practitioner, I was doing all kinds of wow woman work. You know, I, I kind of found myself um, in this space after healing my own self from some sexual repression that I was going through. My body basically had turned on itself um, because I was, I was repressed and unhappy, unhappy in my relationship. So, um, a very interesting story, very unique. I'm sure uh, Asha will have me go into it a little bit later, <laughs> but yeah, I'm new to Charlotte. I've been here all of three months and um, I'm a mother also of a boy and a girl, you know? Uh, there's a lot to tell, but that's, that's, that's a little bit, that's a, a nice intro and I'm excited to be here. Thank you, thank you for have, being here and um, sharing us with you. Um, I'm Asha Sims, um, the Shaka therapist, owner, and uh, clinical director of Shakti Wellness and Yoga. Uh, my work as a licensed clinical mental health therapist uh, transformed into a role I call a clinical holistic energy practitioner. Um, as a mental health clinician, I felt in addressing the issues of 
um, the people is far more than just the mind. It is a holistic approach. We have to look at the mind. We have to look at the body, even the where you're spiritually and understanding how to actually address any imbalances in the body. Um, with that, as an integrated professionals, I incorporate a lot of somatic body work, um, yoga, energy work to help release trauma in our bodies and uh, emotions that have not been processed through appropriately. And, and I, like you all, just believe in this whole approach. I feel we're new, new beings in some way, and therefore it has to be new ways of healing. And often we don't want to step outside the box of what's been taught. So many will say what we're doing is new age healing, but it's really ancient healing yeah. <laughs> i mean we're really taking something new but also some of the like uh dr queen you take the indigenous i know i use a lot of shamanic things and with my energy clearance and stuff because it's like we have to go to a whole different level some people are dealing with spiritual battles some people are dealing with physical battles some people are dealing with mental so we have to learn to treat it and be integrated ourselves in working with others and not just one way. So that's what our commonality where we're coming at as women, black women, um, with these holistic integrative approaches to healing. Now, like Kanee said, a lot of my approach in the healing journey is where I am as a clinical therapist and transform into a holistic wellness practitioner, a personal healing journey. As a woman um, of 50 who had her first child at 40, I have a son, a 10 year old son that <laughs> I said, I had PTSD having a child at 40 because for so long, I didn't think I could have kids, you know, and what is so deep in that journey of being married for seven years and never being able to conceive, but also now understanding the stress that I was in during that marriage had a major impact, I think on conception. And at that time, not realizing I was in an emotionally abusive relationship. And it wasn't until I left the marriage that all of a sudden I found I, I could get pregnant. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, where did this come from? So it let me know more as a woman of how our mental state. Um, and that's when I first got, um, after I went through that divorce, that's when I got into energy work. And that is where I learned to reconnect with myself. I found myself at that time and what it felt like to have my energy clear. I didn't even know it was such a thing to have clear energy. But now realizing as we, and I'm going to speak even more as women and African American women, and then for us being African American and single African American women, there's a lot of things we're holding on to. We're trying to, this, we're trying to survive, we're trying to do this. So yeah, our bodies are doing a lot at this point in time. So that was where my journey started from one, my personal healing before I even took it into wanting to put it into a practice. And that's why I have so much passion because I saw the levels of healing that I had to go through awareness. And then as the healing, how it impacted me sexually. Now as a 50 year old woman with a 40 year old child, bodies going through hormones, menopause, society, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me. It may now with this new that means your your hormone level is causing some major mental health issues now. And that that's a concern, which is also affecting the women in their sex drives and their libidos. And so that's what I wanted us to kind of talk about when the when it comes to our health and our sexual health. And I know me and Kenise have taught that like, sometimes at this point in time in life, a lot of women say, oh, I'm going to be celibate. I'm not having sex anymore. I don't even desire to have sex. From my perception and my aspect in the field, this is not, that's not necessarily the healthiest thing. Now, everybody may be go, go through celibacy for a reason, whether it's spiritual purposes, but even with that, I think we still have to look at the core of why you're really going through it. And are you going to have the necessary training to assist you in that because harnessing sexual energy, you think by being celibate is really helping you, but harnessing something that is part of life and the natural flow of life can
can actually cause more issues than than helping. So I think with that, I start with you, um, Kenise, on um, helping us understand the meridians of energy and how it impacts our sexual health. And then we'll pass it on to Dr. Deja. Well, first, just tell us what you're seeing. You you do a lot with doing that and working with women and the Yoni things. What are you seeing with women now when it comes to their health and their sexual health? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a few things. Um, first, there's a lot of trauma, right? There's a lot of sexual trauma. Um, a high number of women have been molested and assaulted, right? Mm -hmm. So that disrupts the flow, um, libido, uh, natural and healthy desire, right? Um, natural, healthy self-perspective, uh, self-efficacy, all that stuff. It, um, it affects all of that. So there's the trauma and then there is the over, how do I say it? You know, the, the, the feminist movement, the goddess movement is, uh, it's great for the empowerment of women and the reintroduction, -introdu rebirth of the divine feminine. But I also see a hyper sexualization of women too, right? Um, being hypersexualized and not really, know really knowing how to, like you said, harness sexual energy in a productive and healthy way. So it's like both ends mm -hmm. of the spectrum. <clears throat> And the thing about the traumatized woman who is maybe shut down or, or even women, maybe they don't have a lot of trauma, but they haven't had a lot of love, right? And, and um, opportunities to connect sexually in genuine love. So that also influences a shutdown. And the thing that we don't realize is that it's the kidneys, the kidney meridian, the energy of the kidneys in the body is the, uh, it's the meridian and energy that is responsible for what we call postnatal chi and prenatal chi. Prenatal is, you know, the, 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 the information and the energy that we get from our mom and our father. Um, the postnatal is what is made once we are in our own bodies. But the kidneys, nonetheless, is responsible for the sexual energy, the essence, the, your brain development, your personality, your, your, the development of your whole body. Sex is how we get here. And so we have to embrace it on a very fundamental level. Um, when you suppress it, like the kidneys, like I said, rule and manage the development of the body, of the brain, of everything, the, the fundamentals of the body. So when you're suppressing the, the sexual energy, you're suppressing all of that, right? We don't make that connection. The doctors really don't make the connection. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there. And I think that's deep because when we talk about it and, and there's so many dynamics when we talk about our sexual health and just understanding and, and being an African-American woman and indigenous, there's a lot of sexual energy that we have, but because of the past of the shame and you know or religious doctrine that sometimes put that shame or fear in it we it's even more repression so that's why in understanding when we talk about sex it is a psychological aspect of it it is a physical aspect of it it is a spiritual so that you can't really just tap in into one of it so even with that like Kenisa, are you seeing like the women that you work with i know you you do the yoni stings and Kenisa was the first one to introduce me even to yoni massages. So um, of understanding the, the, the key aspect to that anatomy and how it impacts us. Tell a little bit about your personal story and what you're seeing in women so they can really understand mentally how it can affect yeah. our JJs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so for me, I was in a partnership for... Uh, just shy of 10 years, two babies. And it was a very toxic situation, um, but, but silently toxic, like insidious. Like you don't really know that it's fucked up. Am I allowed to say fucked up? Yeah, you know, we, we, know we chat. We grown, <laughs> we grown women here. But, <laughs> but so you know, like you're, you're deep in it and you're like, dang, wait, this is not right. This don't feel right. Why are we talking to each other like this? What? This is not what I signed up for. Um, 
And I had known my spirit knew for a while that it wasn't right, but I still wasn't making the necessary changes. I kept going back and forth. I would leave, go back, leave, go back. And so my body was just like, all right, yeah, just shut down. Mm -hmm. My body shut down, my vagina. Um, I had this crazy irritation, itching for two years. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm like, okay, well, this must be a yeast infection. Nope. Oh, it must be BV. Nope. So I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm a healer. I've been a healer for a long time. So I'm doing everything that I know to do naturally. I'm consulting with my shaman friends, with my other holistic uh, practitioner friends. Nothing. So I go to the doctor finally to tell me what, for them to tell me what I already knew. It wasn't BV. It wasn't yeast. Um, but I did get a diagnosis. It was lichen sclerosis, which basically meant that my vagina was drying up from the outside in. And this is an mm -hmm. autoimmune disease, which means my body was turning on itself. Mm -hmm. um, and they basically said there was nothing that I could do but just manage my dryness and watch my vagina just dry up eventually. Wow. So I was like, nope, that's not happening. Um, you know, eventually I dissolved the relationship and found my way to Atlanta and mm -hmm. There were these amazing series of events that happened in Atlanta, but it led me to exploring and experiencing full body orgasms, which I had never, ever, I didn't even know it was a thing. Mm -hmm. And that changed my life. Mm -hmm. The, all the irritation, everything went away. As soon you know, as so from a full orgasm, I say that because everybody called me the, the oracle of orgasm. So I like stories and talking about this. <laughs> so you mean to tell me we're going to break it down in simple terms. It wasn't medication or anything. You had a full fledged orgasm and that shifted everything in your body. Hot damn. That's what I'm like, talking about. Well, when we talk about full body orgasm, I'm talking about your whole body is activated and engaged. For me, it's a trance. Like I'm in actual trance. Um, and I'm not even here. So the first time that it happened, I didn't even know what was going on. I was actually scared because it was so far from anything I had ever experienced. Um, it's a, it, I feel like it's a spiritual experience. It is. It's, right. it's like an out-of-body experience in some yeah. aspect. Right. It's a form mm -hmm. of trance. It's a form. It's it's like the purest form of like prayer too. Like you could do some deep shifting in that state. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so once I started experiencing this, and my orgasms have never been the same since. Like this is the way that I I go now. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, after that, everything shifted in my body. I didn't need medicine. I didn't need a biopsy. I didn't need any of that. Everything came back. Beautiful, beautiful. And just from that release, and that's why it goes back, I think it's so important when women say, oh, I'm celibate. Sometimes it may be the opposite. You may need an experience to have a full-fledged orgasm to release it um, instead of receiving holding from it. it and holding into it because that does something to you. So because wow, the thing about, thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say the thing about the, the female body and orgasm and pleasure, sexual pre pleasure for us is that it is a mental experience. It's a, or it's a mental connection. Yeah. Um, we have to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to feel safe. We have to be engaged. And so a lot of times when we're thinking, oh, I need to clear my mind. I need to clear myself. Yes. Okay. Do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you, the, the clearing that you need is an orgasm. It's a whole reset of your nervous system, right? right. So right. it's an exercise in itself to learn how to become that free so mm. that you can get to the place where you can release in that way. Which means even with the mind, the mind has to be clear. And so that's why I would say it's a cycle. When I ask those ladies, the prison assessment, are you having an orgasm? They're like, what does this have to do with the mental health assessment? Your <laughs> response is going to tell me a lot whether you get quiet and don't say anything or you having to think. <laughs> if you having to think that I already know <laughs> was not occurring <laughs> at that time when you got to go back. So 
Yes. This is where we're having to realize on how it all plays together. So Dr. Deja, with you being a chiropractor, because somebody would say, well, what does chiropractor have to do with yeah. sex and orgasms? So tell us what you're seeing and, and, and where the imbalance are coming from and how it shows up in your profession. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I loved when, uh, when Kenise was talking uh, about like how it all stems from the kidneys and I'm going to nerd out just a little bit. So <laughs> your kidneys, I can't help it. <laughs> your kidneys are supplied by your T11 and T12 nerve and that actually is directly related to your reproductive organs. Um, it also has to do with um, excessive stress when you have stress. It has to do with um, hormonal imbalances. So infertility. So we can find that misalignment in the T12 area or even in the sacrum area that supplies your sexual organs. So when patients come in within the clinic, you know, a lot of them married, you know, husband, wife, wife doesn't want to have sex, you know, after she had a child, just has no, no desire whatsoever to even be intimate in that way. Um, and what we realized with her that she actually had a misalignment within those regions that actually kind of reset her hormonal system. Um, women that were infer infertile now are bearing children, you know, um, from releasing that power or the power that was blocked from the nerve having pressure on it from the bone. And so it's just amazing because it makes me think back to Thomas Edison when he talked about my favorite quote that's like right on the wall when you come in and it talks about the doctor of the future they won't give any medicine but they'll interest the, the patients in the care of their human frame which is their spine diet and the cause of and provision of disease so you know like our body knows what to do even when you were saying Kenisa was like it wasn't until you had that moment that all of a sudden what they had diagnosed with you had went away you know mm -hmm. it's like our body has this self-healing potential that's within it and it's just locked up because of stress because of what we what we put our th self through because of not eating properly because of not resting you know people don't realize that it's like literally what you intake in your body you know um whether it's food whether it's the amount of sleep you know or whether you what you allow to come into your spirit it has an effect it has an effect and so um just spot on right with you guys where you're at as far as just like it is all connected right so, so even like what Kenise was saying with the energy and the chiropractic adjustment yeah just hearing what you said and I was thinking like you never really think about childbirth is such a crisis to the body it's it's trauma we trauma. don't really realize that and just how a baby coming out I, I'm just hearing you think about it can shift the spine Yep, sure does. Cause our so spouse. it's not okay. that. Yeah, cause I hear ladies talking. About, I have to have children. I don't have any desire to have sex, and it's not that. It but if that spine is out of alignment, where the energy can't flow to those areas, you're yeah. right. It's going to impact the, the libido and mm -hmm. that hormonal yeah. input and out of things because of that. Um, Kenise, I know you were saying one time it was something we were talking. Oh about the aspect of, I've, I've heard women as they approach a certain age, 40, 50 on up, I don't even think about sex. I don't have to have sex no more. Like as you get older, your sex drive is supposed to decrease. And actually you explained to me that if you have no libido, that means you're out of balance or it could be a sign of unhealth of something, of your health not being good because you're supposed to have a libido. Tell me a little bit more about that, Kenise. Yeah. So Okay, so what Chinese medicine tells us is that as the body ages, the kidney energy decreases, we call it for men, it's kidney yang deficiency, for women it's kidney yin deficiency. So this is a natural progression. And so maybe the desire will kind of, um, you know, go away some, but for the desire to be there, at, not to be there at all is, uh, it's an indicator that the, the body is unhealthy because again, like the kidney, that's, that's your fire. That's your essence. It's the gene. Right. 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 And um, if you don't have the very desire, the fire that created you, that brought you here, if you don't have that, that means you might be slipping away. Something mm. is off. Mm. That's, that's real deep. And would you say, Dr. Deja, with that and the meridians and helping to understand, so a chiropractic adjustment can reactivate libido and all of that to want to have a sex drive, again, if that's what's causing things to be 
out of line. Yeah, if, if that's if that's if that's what's causing things to be out of line, what I say is that every single organ in our body, right, is supplied by a nerve, right? And from your nerves, your brain is sending information down that spinal cord out to those nerves, to those organs to function, whether that has to do with your um, you know, your reproductive system, or whether that has to do with your heartbeat, or whether that has to do with your lung. So whenever there's a bone that's out of place, it doesn't allow that proper signal that's supposed to be flowing to go 100%. You know, just like she was saying, that natural fire that's supposed to be going, it doesn't happen. And so it can have an impact on that and decrease it. So what we do as chiropractors, we just remove the interference and allow the body to be able to heal itself. But I don't think that it's only just chiropractic as well, because, you know, health is not, it's, there's, it's so many multifaceted. So I can adjust a person all day. I can adjust their T12 all day, all day. But if they're coming home and they're stressed out, if they're not eating right, you know, if they're not, you know, taking care of their body, it's just going to pretty much trigger it rack back and it will never get resolved. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and, and I know we're talking about women's health, but this even applies for the men that are dealing with erectile dysfunction yeah, or, as well. dysfunction. yeah. yeah. that's that we probably do a whole nother show on yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> right because that's when i'm hearing the women are getting for they're even more sexually repressed and frustrated because if it goes back down to the chi in which a lot of men don't even understand what sex and ejaculation and and in turn you know and, and and the difference between ejaculation and ejaculation and your energy and while we have so many men that are dealing with erectile dysfunction and low testosterone level to produce yeah. sperm it is also coming it could come back from the same thing and out of alignment energy and all of that and so this is why i think it's so important on what we're talking about because i know what i've seen when these topics and and just like can tell you went to a doctor and they told you they were just with but nothing we can do the holistic side, what we what we offer as professionals is so key to the missing yeah. piece now. So I'm pretty sure if you didn't have that support of going holistic and for somebody to just give you this doom, that could be as a therapist for someone to say you drying up that your womanhood, you know, it's like that's a whole different psyche that you can literally just draw up yourself by taking this diagnosis and not doing anything about it. So it's good that you had that support to show you other ways. And I think that's important. So I'm wanting the women to know you don't have to just accept this way of being. And that's so many women I know that are going through menopause and we laugh and we talk. I was like, I did not know this not right now i realize why you know when that moment with my son it was like a mirror like oh this is how my mom oh oh this is what menopause and hormonal rage is like you know as well but one thing and what i like about our discussions is because we're really lacking amongst women in our community of that knowledge we don't talk to the young ladies about their cycles to even know about their bodies now so why would we expect grown women to really know their body. Sometimes I ask women about their body parts and the different parts of the vagina and they're like, I don't know. They just know one part, clitoris. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's all other parts. So it goes back to our lack of knowledge of healing or even what is out there to assist us. So yeah. Kenise, with the services that you offer, how will what you do assist a woman that is in a situation whether they have low sex drive low libido dealing with trauma and abuse what type of services and how would your services assist them in that process yeah you know the gosh the magic of uh chinese medicine is that it truly is energy medicine right the the acupuncture accesses the meridians which are energy highways and um, so it's so good for not only pain, because we're dealing with chi, which is energy. That's just, just primal energy, chi and blood. And it pretty much comes down to that, like your chi and blood uh, needing to move and, and be repositioned and realigned. I mean, there's definitely other things at play, but we're just manipulating the chi and blood in the body. And um, that can 
that can play a part in healing anxiety and depression and, you know, panic attacks and insomnia. And if you heal that, that can play a part in healing, you know, the, 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 the desire to not want to have sex, right? right? Or if we're moving the blood, we can heal up um, fibroids. You know, if we're moving the blood and we're nourishing the blood, we can reverse a, a dry vagina. Um, there's just so much that, that I can help with. But again, as we all said on this, uh, on, on this webinar is that it's not just my needles, right? And, and here's the thing. I'm an assistant to your healing. I do not heal you. I right. only show up to help your body heal itself. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't doing the, the other work, if you're not, so the, the, the other part is that these issues also are a manifestation, manifestation of what is happening spiritually, right? Yes. Like these things have been showing up already, sometimes passed down from your mother and her mother, and then compounded by your own life experiences. So you have to have a spiritual practice. You have to have tools for dealing with your emotional stuff. Um, in addition to coming to see me and me giving you needles or you sitting on a pot of herbs that's going to help tonify, tone your, uh, your uterus, right? Mm -hmm. to, or move the blood to pull the fibroids out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, tonify or warm up your uterus to heal the, the pain that you might be feeling during sex. There's so much, but you have to do the work as well. I like that. Yeah, of, of doing the work of, and often that's what we don't, we don't realize how much we harness in that area. And I would never forget when we did that podcast and you were explaining to me about what a yoni massage is. And at that time I was like, what, what is that? I've never heard that, you know? And, and I, and I use what you talk to a lot of women because being a body work, an energy worker and, and understanding the bodies, I always help women to understand Sometimes we don't even realize we're stressed and somebody hit our shoulders and like, oh, you tense. And you're like, oh, I didn't realize I was until you told me that muscle of the vagina is a muscle. Yeah. So that is the entryway before of a spiritual gateway, everything. So if mentally you're dealing with not trust or anything and they enter, that imprint becomes in the muscle. Yes. So you, I've heard women that I, they don't like sex because it hurts because the penetration is not comfortable, but you have to think about that tense. If you up here is, are tense, it's going to show up not just in your shoulders. It can show up in your vagina yeah, too. And that's why I would say it's a lot of angry JJs <laughs> out here because they is angry, they mad, they hurt, and they had these babies. So mm -hmm. all of that. And so now we see these fibroids and everything showing up and all they want is to give us hysterectomies. So I think what we offer mm -hmm. can sh shift that. And so Dr. Deja, with your approach, your chiropractor and, and you go in a holistic, what would your services do for someone if somebody was going through some of these things? How would coming to see you? I know yeah. the, the shift of the spine can adjust. So what would some of your recommendations because I think if somebody knew they can get a chiropractor adjustment and have an orgasm again, they're going to be lining up at your door. <laughs> the big boy with sticks. So, and I might be the first one. Like. <laughs> uh, I'm, look, I'm about to vibrate. I'm coming to Kenise, get some needles, and get my spine, my spine straight. I'm going to be a whole new one. When y'all see all this stuff going on, be like, yep, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> You've been activated. So I think that. Um... I just wanted to tag on what you were saying as far as like muscle memory. Muscle memory is a real thing, you know, and we talk about it constantly because people have to understand that whenever there is a trauma, whether that's a sexual trauma or whether that's actually a physical trauma, the muscles within your body are automatically producing this response of remembering it within it. So um, when you were talking about, you know, the patient that I had that she just literally for her it was it was mental and emotional triggering mm -hmm. all the way back from when she was 
I want to say maybe like ninth grade where she was mm. almost sexually molested, but not sexually molested, but to the right. point that it was just like right there that it just was almost like a PTSD moment for her. Right. Mm. Um, and so I think after she had had a child, because she said when she was with her husband, she was great. They were regular, they were doing their thing, you know, and then after they had the baby, it just kind of like switched. And so what I'm thinking that when you talked about the muscle memory of the vagina, that, that at that time when she was giving birth, you know, of course, that's a traumatic thing for the mom. That's a traumatic thing for the baby because your your pelvis literally has that pubic symphys right in the middle, the little squishy part that literally liquefies and then your hips go out so that the baby can come in to the world. Hmm. So you're literally hoping that when it goes out and your sacrum goes down for the baby to come out the canal, that it's going to come back together. And this is a perfect birth, ideal birth, you know, very minimal active labor, which I'm sure we all know that that's just not a real thing. You know, things happen, situations occur. You know, I know for my first one, as much as I, you know, wanted it to, to go this way, go that way, go this way, I ended up having to get an episiotomy, you know, because I wasn't able to, to get him through. Granted, I was laying on my back trying to push, which is the worst way to have a child. Have a child. Didn't do the second right. time. Second time was trauma to my body that we need okay. chiropractic assessments, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the doctor wanted to be comfortable to deliver the baby, but you know, that all itself, you know, produced trauma for, for me. You know, and I'm sure that when she birthed her child, that produced trauma for her as well, too. So then that just triggers a like a automatic response when it comes to that time of being intimate. That mm-hmm. is just like, oh, my guard's up. And like you said, it's literally all connected. If you're tense up here, you're most likely going to be tense down there right. because yeah, yeah. sexual touch, touch alone, you know, is a powerful thing. Right. And so if you ever feel like that touch is not done in the right way, it can have a traumatic effect on you. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I see my patients that come in with, you know, I always ask them about their cycles that are like, oh, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's regular or or if it's not regular, like, you know, it's here or there. I'm just like, what does here or there mean? Like, are we at a full 28 days? You know, how Mm -hmm. people try to normalize things. I'm like, okay, well, is it painful? Because it's really not supposed to be painful when your uterus sheds, it should just be like a cleansing, you know, they'd be like, oh, wait I'm not supposed to have cramps I'm like no you're not supposed to have cramps but society you know makes it seem like oh we got this mind off for your cramps so you're supposed to have it you know and so when I get that information and that like triggers my mind like okay their cycle is irregular okay they're having menstrual cramps okay all right they're trying to get pregnant they have been trying to get pregnant for years and it's not working then that's when my brain starts thinking like okay what kind of nerve interference is is blocked that's not allowing the brain to communicate to this organ on how it's supposed to function 100%. And so then we'll do a scan device that actually measures the temperatures on both sides of the spine and lets me know where there is pressure on the nerve. And then we'll use a full spine x-ray to be able to see the position of the bones to see if they're tilted to one side or the other or rotated to the side or the other. Um, and then from there with palpation, feeling around the spine, you know, having them go slight movements, trying to find that restriction, those all come together to say, okay, yeah, we need to adjust their T12 or their L1, you know, or we need to adjust their sacrum um, and then measure them throughout care there. Um, and I just kind of always ask them, you know, how was the cycle this month? Did you notice any cramps? They're like, you know what? I didn't have any cramps. I'm like, or, or like, yeah, I did. Or, but it was a little bit less, but not as intense as it was. Like I wasn't throwing up. And when people are like, you was throwing up because of cramps, like right. that yeah. is not okay. Yeah. Not you know? Right. Um, so pretty much through that, you know, analyzation of the technique that I utilize, and then also just getting information on what exactly is going on with them emotionally, mentally, to kind of give me a better picture of why their body might actually be the way that it is. It is. Yeah. And it sounds as if too, that anybody's had a baby should go for a chiropractic adjustment after having a birth. Now that I think about it, because if literally your uterus can get knocked out the box or out of alignment and shift through sex, which throws mm-hmm. some women off when the, the uterus is out of alignment, yeah. having yeah. a baby then can really, because sometimes the shoulders can get stuck in the pelvic bone area and throw things off. So do you yeah. think even have you seen how a chiropractor adjustment helps with depression or could help eliminate possible postpartum? Yes, yes. So uh, we'll go to like the top normally for when we think of uh, depression, anxiety, brain fog, headaches, uh, digestive issues, um, 
uh, difficulty thinking, um, we go up to the upper neck area, which is right next to the brainstem, right? And that is like the, that's the all hail Mary part, right? Because if there's a misalignment up top on that brainstem, that's going to decrease the amount of uh, blood flow that's actually going to the brain that can definitely produce, you know, those symptoms that we're talking about as far as depression. And then also with postpartum, you know, helping the mom regulate those hormones, right? Because that baby is coming down from you, the, the, you like, you know, they sit right up here underneath the boobs when you have them and they slowly start to move down, going down your lumbars, going down into your sacrum area. Those all have to play with your hormone balance, right? Yeah. So if there's pressure when that baby's coming out, getting that hormone bone back into place is going to help because once we have the baby, the hormones just like, phew, it's like a quick, like baby go on. Now it's not, you know? Right. And so sometimes that's a lot for people to even be able to like control on their own with a, just a normal life, but add stress on top of that, add, you know, whatever else people might be dealing with emotionally, a brand new baby crying. If you were, if you are married, then you have to worry about your marriage and not being who you were now, what you are now. And so there's so many things that play into it, but absolutely like those adjustments can definitely help. I always encourage my new moms. I see ladies while they're pregnant and then after they're pregnant as well, after they have delivered and the baby comes in, you know, it's just so important because you're literally Literally opening up for that baby to to come <laughs> to come wow. out I had a patient her sister I was seeing <laughs> and her sister was pregnant and she's like Dr. Deja my sister needs to get in here because her baby's like three months old and she's still walking like she's pregnant okay exactly exactly right. when it came back her hips were one was high up this way and that way and so so there's just so many things that can happen but yeah you're spot on it's so important to get checked after having a child to get mama back to who you are to help you balance back into life and help to process all these things you know it's okay to take care of yourself after you have the kid sometimes as moms I know myself it's just back burner you know I'll run 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 do this for my boys do this for that and then I'm just like oh well, what about me? And so self-care right. is a real thing. And we need it as mamas because we got others that we have to care for. Right. And, and once we do that, then we'll have the space. So it, it's not a chore when it's time to talk about having an orgasm. It's like, oh, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> it, should, you know, it should be the opposite <laughs> way. Like, hold up. I'm stressed. This is what I have time for. Not, I don't have time for that. Because that's what I hear so many women. I don't have time for that. And I'm like, yeah. that not healthy that's not healthy so i think this was great information i'm so what you what we are offering i think is really going to help a lot of women that because this is not something i often want to talk about it's not casual conversation to say i'm not having orgasms you know right, you don't really right, go right. around just tell people that you're not you just go along with it fake the funk like you've been doing it and not realize <laughs> what you missed out on life you know that the simple pleasures and joy and bliss and so that's why I try to get, you know, that's where a lot of my studies and, and doing a lot of practices with Tantra that led me to Tantra was to really understand every day should be blissful. We as women should go outside and like, oh my God, that sun is shining. I feel good. It Everything should give that. And if we harness that, then it's easier for the embrace the feminists. It's, it's easier for us to, to be that nurturer because at the end of the day, we're doing it for ourselves. And I think that's the thing I see so many women have lost themselves and then they expect mm -hmm. their partners to be the pleaser. I've heard women, oh, he doesn't say, he's too little, he's too small, he can't, he can't go long. But at the end of the day, we should be able to have orgasms without a partner. And so mm -hmm. once we find that power, to, power of who we are, then it kind of goes into who we are with and what we need. But understand, I think at the end of the day, people laugh at me when I talk about orgasm. They, you know, like they said, apple a day to keep the doctor away. But I do feel or at orgasm a day to keep the doctor away because you're getting energy, whether you have a partner or self-pleasure. At the end of the day, you have to know what pleasure is and allow that energy to flow through you until you can find a partner in the harness that because we're not even really going into that whole sexual transfer energy. And that's a whole nother topic of the ethereal cord of sexual contact on that spirit on how it can impact our bodies. But 
we're dealing with the physical aspect of are you having orgasms and what's going on in your body if you're not and if your libido is low there's some basically some things out of alignment whether it's mental from trauma stress it is not healthy to go around and not think about sex you should we always say men they always think about it what well, we should too it's just often we suppress it um, because we haven't been getting satisf satisfaction or we don't know our own bodies to know what we need. So, um, Kenise, will you let folks know how to find you um, and um, how to reach you in case they, you know, all of us were working together. So we're going to be sharing clients possibly amongst each other. And this is part of what this is, is integrated treatment about as practitioners sharing clients and working together and not because that's why I hear a lot of people they go to this doctor they go to this doctor they go to this doctor and everybody's telling them different things but i think if we come together in a more integrated holistic approach this person dealing with the mind body spirit whatever the things are then you can heal whole instead of pieces and that's why i think it's fragmented sometimes the healing so it yeah. keeps you connected to the system because you're getting a piece here mm -hmm. a piece there and a piece yeah. there and it's never yeah. that whole complete piece <laughs> yes so can you let them know where to find you if they need to reach you and need any more information from you or services yeah absolutely um before i do that i i do want to stress the importance though you know I, as i said at the beginning i am an integrative health practitioner so i absolutely believe in you know, going to the Western doctors and mm -hmm. getting a diagnosis and using all of their diagnostic tools. That is highly important. You know, mm -hmm. I would take my babies when they were babies and I didn't necessarily know what was wrong. I would take them to their pediatrician and then I would bring them home and I would heal them. Right. right? So mm -hmm. that is important. I think sometimes we miss that. We, we have this negative, um, notion of western medicine and doctors when they mm -hmm. doctors western medicine definitely has a place and we need yes. to utilize it and respect that so i just wanted to um you know offer that mm -hmm. but i can be found at feminine wellness guru um you can make an appointment there i'm also on facebook as kenise ford um ig dr queen that's k-w-e-e-n you can email me k-e-n-i-e-c-e -E -E, at me com. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Deja? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can check out the website at www.numa, chiropractic.com. Um, my Instagram is Dr. underscore Deja underscore N as in Nancy W. Cairo, C-H-I-R-O. Um, and the email address is connected to the website. Um, it's a really long, so <laughs> you can find me that way. Um, and yeah, I look forward to connecting with you guys and uh, seeing what happens, you know, when you put yourself first and, and take care of, you know, take care of you because mamas deserve it. <laughs> and non-mamas, just women deserve it. We need to think That's of right, ourselves a little deserve. bit more than, than what we do because we deserve care. You know, Definitely. we give out a lot. We need to care yeah. for ourselves. And I'm with uh, Ashakti Wellness. You can find me um, website www.ashaktiwellness.com. A S H A K T I Wellness.com. Um, go there. You find me there. Email address info at ashaktiwellness.com. Um, energy work, counseling, therapy, and yoga. So we are all here as integrated practitioners. We thank you guys for. Um, participating if you signed up for this that means that you're looking for some answers so hopefully within this webinar information um we provided you with a starting point um and really a finishing point what really i'm not even gonna say a finish because healing is every day i think that's as women we always say when i get healed and i think that's putting you up for failure to think you're waiting for the stopping point and, and it is daily so these services um i think are very beneficial to our community. And so we hope you guys uh, look into what we are saying. I always say, do your research. Just don't take what we say, do your research as well. And that's yeah. important in your healing journey that you do the research and not always rely on what other people say, but that's the spiritual part to know what spirit tells you to do and what you need as well and become an active person in your health practice. And like Kenisa 
even going to a medical doctor. Go with what you know too when you go. But this is what I'm feeling. This is what I've noticed. This is what I'm dealing with yeah. so that they can make an adequate assessment of instead of just at that moment. And so the more we take pride in our health and go with information, it helps with the whole quarter coordination of care for everybody to be on the same page and all. So I thank you ladies. It's been a blessing having you guys here. So I know we're gonna get a bunch of responses um, from what we offer and how we can assist. So I think the more happy with JJ's out here, the world would be a better place. It's like that, what's that the movie Chirac when, you know, they ain't acting right, we cutting it off, then I don't think they want that. So, you know, this is what we rebuilding nations by rebuilding vaginas. So. <laughs> so the world is gonna thank us. So I thank you guys, I appreciate you. And um, I look forward to, to more. And, and, providing more information for our community. So thank you guys.